welcome to KU's Summer Community Webinar Series. I'm joined by Jean-Luc Gerret. We're here to discuss innovation and taking a systematic approach to creativity and the innovation process. So innovation, that's a word we hear all of the time, but it's a bit of a buzzword. Can you tell us more about what it is? Yes, uh, absolutely. And uh, thank you for having me here. Innovation is something we hear all the time. It's really overhyped uh, for a lot of people. Innovation is often synonymous to creativity, to ideas, but that's not really what it is about. Uh, and the, the very first thing I, I, I want to demystify uh, in a sense is uh, the difference between invention and innovation. So if we think about it historically already, um, uh, you probably remember Nikola Tesla and all the you know, uh, inventions he has created, but he has not been really successful at commercializing these. Um, so Nikola Tesla is really an inventor, uh, not so much maybe an innovator. Okay. Um, when you compare it to Edison, for instance, who you know became a, a multimillionaire, and uh, we could also look at more recent examples to you know demystify again that difference between invention and innovation. Uh, just look at Apple, for instance. Apple is considered the most innovative company in the world, right? Uh, but if you look at, um, you know, when they started, when they introduced the iPhone in 2007, they didn't invent the touch screen, they didn't invent the MP3 player, uh, they didn't invent the internet, yet they combined all of this to create value for the end users. And this is really what innovation about, is about. Innovation is about creating new value and, and being able to deliver that value and capturing that value. And that's really where the difference is between invention and innovation. And if we put that in the academic context, in the, in the university context, it also means that when we look at research, for instance, is about being able to take all these, you know, inventions and ideas coming from research and turning them into products, into commercializing them, into creating businesses out of these ideas. So where does the creativity come into play? Is that the coming up with the ideas themselves? Yeah, uh, you know, the, the one of the uh, misconceptions, I think, is that uh, it's all, again, it's all about the ideas, uh, but the ideas is really only um, the starting point. Uh, ideas is about connecting the dots, if you want, between, um, you know, different information you have, different insights you have, and then coming up uh, with that, uh, you know, initial concept or initial idea that could solve a problem. Uh, so creativity is really about uh, coming up uh, with a vast amount of, of, of ideas about, uh, it's about diversity, it's about divergent thinking, uh, but then you need to put all of that together and, and you need to have you know, a systematic approach to take all these ideas forward and turn them into concepts, turn them into, into businesses. Uh, so creativity is really only the starting point. But could anybody be creative? Yeah, I think that is also something um, that we, we, uh, we tend to believe that uh, some people are extremely creative while others are not. And yeah, some people are a bit more creative. But if you look at children, all children are creative. We're all creative by nature. Uh, we all want to explore. We all want to try out new things. But as we grow up, uh, our cultural, our social context, our education, our workplace, they tend to make us more rigid. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that happens is that, uh, you know, once you have worked in an environment for a very long time, you tend to think in a certain way. Uh, and this is where uh, basically we need creativity techniques to help us get out of that mold and start to think differently. Um, again, ideas, innovation is all about um, diversity in thinking. It's about divergent thinking, it's also about you know, convergent thinking so that we can uh, elaborate and develop these ideas and then come up with interesting uh, novel concepts. So you've mentioned divergent thinking a couple of times and now convergent thinking yeah. as well. What's the difference between the two? Right, so, so, so basically um, at the start of the, of the innovation process, again, when, when you want to, to kickstart uh, that creativity process, uh, you typically start with a problem or a challenge that you want to solve. Uh, but you don't want to constrain your brain by thinking in a certain direction. So initially, you want as many ideas as possible. No idea is a bad idea. You want to have uh, 
you know, techniques that help you focus on volumes, on differences between ideas. And this is what we call divergent, divergent thinking. It's not one stream only, it can go in many different directions. Nothing is bad at the start. But then, uh, as we have uh, this massive amount of ideas, uh, we need to start uh, consolidating them. Mm -hmm. uh, some ideas might be very similar. Uh, we need to uh, maybe group some ideas. We need also to decide what is our focus. Maybe some of the ideas are more relevant to us than others. Uh, this is where we talk about convergent thinking. So as part of the creativity process, initially you diverge, you come up with a lot of ideas, then you cluster these ideas, you, you group these ideas, you reduce the number of ideas, and this is what we call uh, convergent thinking. And, and this iteration of divergence convergence is something we, we follow throughout the innovation process. Uh, you could say that once you have an idea and once you start turning that into a prototype, you might have several prototypes you want to try. So it's not only one prototype because you're not sure what is going to work. And then again, as you learn, as you get feedback uh, on, on, on your prototypes, again you go back to, to convergent thinking. So that sounds like one way of refining your ideas. Are there other techniques that you can yeah, use and offer? Absolutely, absolutely. So, so um, the, the type of techniques you use for divergent and convergent thinking are slightly, slightly different. Uh, so for instance, uh, initially, um, when, when you want to connect the dots, uh, you typically use brainstorming techniques. Uh, one, one of the techniques I like is called forced connections. Uh, forced connections is when you use two words, one related to the problem mm -hmm. and one which is a completely random world. And you force people to think about ideas by combining these two, uh, two words. Uh, so that's, you know, that helps you in the brainstorming part. But then once you want to uh, consolidate, once you want to refine your ideas, you use uh, other techniques. So for instance, one of the techniques is called scamper. Uh, which is a technique, of, actually the acronym uh, stands for substitute, uh, combine, uh, uh, replace, eliminate. So there's different, different uh, sub-techniques you can use where, for instance, you can uh, remove elements of an existing idea uh, to transform, transform that idea. Um, you know, simple examples of this is that, you know, if you look at an, an old phone, you know, the ones with, uh, you know, the rotary, yeah. that probably, it's too young to have that you have seen, uh, but you know when you replace the, the, the rotary with the numbers with a dial pad, that's a typical substitution, and you, you kind of can, you create a new idea just by substituting one element of an, of an existing product or concept. So I've had my idea. I've gone through the refining process. I'm pretty happy with it. What happens next? Yeah, so here also is where um, I think a lot of companies uh, tend to fail. Is that uh, they might start, um, you know, in a very uh, jolly and positive way about innovation, saying it's all about ideas, but what do you do with the ideas afterwards? So often you see companies starting with competitions, you know, getting the employees engaged, uh, but then nothing happens. What you need really is a, is a systematic process, a systematic approach, where basically you define uh, certain milestones. Uh, if the idea has been validated, for instance, and this is kind of the first step. The first step uh, in the process is about validating the problem. So we, 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 and in order to do that, we need to talk to customers. So once you have an idea, you think that that idea is solving a problem, but the reality is that these are all assumptions. So the very first thing to do is to validate these initial assumptions, validate that the problem that you think is a problem is actually a problem worthwhile solving. So once you do that, once you have enough validation, that is where typically we tell people, okay, now you've done that homework, now we can take you to the next step, and that is start to develop a solution, start to develop a prototype. Uh, and again, here we want to validate as well. So the next milestone will be validation of the solution. Uh, and that is something, you know, you might get a little bit of funding just to develop the solution, develop the prototype. Uh, this is also why some, some, sometimes we refer to this also to as going all the way to what we call a minimum viable product. That right. is a product that is good enough solving a particular problem for an end user. Now, step, step one problem, step two solution. Third step is, okay, now you have a solution to a problem, but can you sell it? Yeah. So the next thing is about validating the business model. Uh, and we can go on like that. So once you have validated the business model, 
you can go into a stage where you scale your business or actually set up the business. So these are all different stages you have to go through up to a point where basically you can scale your business and then get follow-up funding to further grow and accelerate your business. So there's like these five stages we, we, we have to go through up to you know, the point where you, you end up maybe creating a unicorn. <laughs> So to conclude, I just want to touch on the fact that Khalifa Innovation Center, which you're from, is housed here at Khalifa University. Yes. What role does academic education play in going from an idea to a startup company? Yeah, I think that's uh, actually, it's, uh, I, I was hoping to get this question because this is really important. Uh, uh, when, when you look at entrepreneurs, um, a, a lot of them uh, start with an idea or, or have seen a problem and start developing a solution. The problem is that there's 10,000 probably startups around the world doing exactly the same thing, right? Um, I mean, just to give you an example, I, I, I did um, uh, research, you know, last year to look at how many uh, parking startups I could come up with just, you know, just by Googling that. I could find thousands of parking startups trying to solve exactly the same problem. So the issue here, and, and that's where the connection to academic research is as well, is that there's very little differentiation. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is that many of these startups leverage uh, first mover advantage. You know, if you look at uh, uh, Uber, Karim, they were, Karim was the first in the region. That's why they, they, they really could grow as fast as, 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 as they did. Uh, but, but at the end, it's a copy, or it's very close to, to, uh, to Uber, and a lot of the ideas are similar. But when you come from academic research, often uh, your research is connected to intellectual property, which is unique. You have your patents, you have a possibility to differentiate much more than some of these startups. So the opportunity is really to take that unique uh, differentiation that can come out of, of research and then turn that into a business. And this is where we come in. Uh, so we, we try to help these um, you know, researchers or, or university students that have that seed mm. that, that, that needs to be nurtured. So, so we, we, we try to, to help them um, you know, connect the dots uh, help that initial research, that re initial invention, put that in a business context and, and then help them to develop enough of a strong value, value proposition, validate that so, so basically that we can help them reach the market and then turn that into a startup, into a business and then hopefully get funded. Can you give one piece of advice to anyone who wants to start their own business from their idea? If you could say one thing to them, what would it be? I think that the most important thing is um, a commitment, uh, passion, uh, validation. And um, what I recommend to a lot of entrepreneurs really is to give their ideas a chance. Uh, you know, when you want to create a startup, it's not a side activity, right? You, you need to give it a chance. You need to spend enough time on it. Uh, and that means maybe, you know, maybe uh, try it out for three months, uh, you know, put the 20 hours extra per week into that startup and try to see if you, if you manage to get that validation, if you manage to get that traction, if you manage to get commitment from others. This is also important. If you're passionate enough, if you're committed, uh, if you put in the effort, your vision, uh, your uh, you know, passion will also, this will be contagious. You'll be able to convince others. If you're not able to do that, then probably you need to let it uh, you, you know, uh, rest a bit, think about it, sleep over, and, and, and until you can grow that uh, basically passion. So really it's commitment, passion, and then execution. Uh, so try it out at least for three months, see how far you get, uh, and then take a decision for further commitment. Jean-Luc, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. And for all of those watching, please come and visit us at Khalifa Innovation Center and we'll tell you more about entrepreneurship and startups.